Hey, Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank. I'm trying not to call his name all loud as hell, but at the same time, I'm like, Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank. I'm calling him like that. I'll go walking behind him. Now, I don't want to grab his arm again once we done got on the other side of this counter because you got, you know, you got family members out here. You got the officer right here. So if I grab the man's arm, he snatched back. The officer going to instantly think me and him got some type of conflict or they going to think I'm trying to stop him from something. And then they probably cancel both of our visitations and make us go back to the dorm. I ain't had one yet, so I ain't trying to get mine canceled. Frank walking in, bro, it's like he... I, it's like he automatically identify and see his wife. Like he goes straight over there. Me, I'm standing here for a minute. I'm looking around. It's just I ain't never seen this girl in person. So that's what's making me think like, damn, I ain't never seen her in person. I know what she looked like, but that's what had me kind of, and then I seen her hand go up. Now, it wasn't that many people there. It probably was like six tables. The table, me and Uncle Frank table just so happened to be all the way in the back, like the first four tables. You know, it was some people that had kids, and it was some people over here, just in the middle. You got people getting up, walking back and forth from the uh, vending machines, going to buy their family members food. That's one thing about the visitation. People in prison love. They love visitation because they get to eat food out the vending machine, that piece of them hot wings. You don't get to do all that in the regular dorm. You eating pig slop. I'm damn near nervous. Once I see her waving at me, I'm damn near nervous because how close Uncle Frank table is to mine. I'm thinking like every time I walk over there, it's like I'm cringing up almost like, damn, he's gonna hit it. Now, I've never, bro, I never, ever, ever, ever have liked the idea of a man, um, you know, doing something physically to a woman as far as like you hitting her or you slap. Like to me, it just, it just don't look right to me. Now. You know, I know of many situations where women put themselves in that situation or they might pop it off. They might hit him first and then he hit her back. So I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying nothing crazy, but I'm just saying me personally, I just never liked the idea of that. Walking this way, I'm just cringing up every time I look at Uncle Frank, but he was hugging. He was hugging his wife. He was squeezing her. You know what I'm saying? I just looked at the lady, bro. You know, she a, you know, she kind of a thick, she kind of thick and I think the thing that made me feel bad the most when I looked at her is, you know, they both older, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, they both look at least between 55 and 65. That's the age they look. So it ain't like, you ain't no young girl. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like you're more fragile because of your age is basically what I'm trying to say. I get over there, I hug old girl. Man, I hug her so hard. I pick her up. I kissed her. I squeezed that thing. Two handful, and you know, then we sit down and we go to talk. I said, we was probably two minutes into the conversation. I told her, like, you brought them quarters? So she like, yeah, they right here. She had it in the chair with her. She got a, a clear bag. The prison make you bring it in a clear bag, or they give you a clear bag. I don't know which one. But she had like $30 worth of quarters. So I'm telling her everything I need, everything I want. I'm like, man, hot wings, pizza, two Sprites, a Dr. Pepper, two Reese's Cups, all that. So she get up, she go to the vending machine. She get up and go to the vending machine. Now it probably wasn't 30 seconds later, Frank wife get up and go to the vending machine. Now, the way we were sitting was, all right, our table right here. My chair is here, old girl is here. Cause at the prison, they make you sit across from each other. They don't want you all too close. You can get your hug and kiss in the beginning and in the end, but they want you. I feel like this light just dimmed down somehow. But they want you sitting across from each other so they can monitor everything. So the way Uncle Frank table was, his wife was sitting right here. He was sitting right here. So I'm looking at his back the whole time. So when she got up and went to the vending machine, I'm like, Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank. So Uncle Frank kind of turned a little bit. He looking at me. I'm like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Because you got now at that front table, you know, you're going to always have some people with some bad ass kids that can't control their kids. Like, it was two families, and it was these little white girls. Man, I say they probably was about, can't be no older than about three, bro. Two or three, three years old at the max. And they just kept running back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So ultimately, sometimes they'll run in between me and Uncle Frank table. And you know the prison, they got toys and little games and stuff for the kids to kind of keep them occupied. So you got the little kids just running back and forth. So I tell them, I'm like, Uncle Frank. So when he finally gave me his attention, I'm like, bro, come on, bro. You got kids in here, bro. Come on, Uncle Frank. Just let it go. Just, 
Just kill her, just kill her with the mind, bro. Don't don't physically do nothing to her, Uncle Frank. Just just beat her with the mind, bro. Just fall back. Let her let her do what she do, bro. She gonna get hers, bro. Karma is real, bro. So he like, yeah. He was like, I hear you, dog. I hear you, dog. Girls come back, sit down. We go to eating, chopping it up. We talking. Man, these girls been there the whole time. So I'm knowing in my mind, like, the stuff I just said, it just really worked. I really just helped Uncle Frank look at it from another perspective. And then maybe he also was looking at it like, you know, at the end of the day, you know the man loved the girl. You know what I'm saying? It's just he was feeling some type of emotion, but he ain't did nothing crazy. So I'm feeling good. Like, damn, I just really helped Uncle Frank out. So now I'm thinking about the conversation we about to have when we go back into the dorm. And, you know, he about to be telling me, like, hell yeah, little bro, you was right. I was thinking about it. So I'm saying, talking, we chopping it up, man. Hours, hours go by. Now it's 3 p.m. Visitation ends. So the officer had already came and gave us, like, a 15-minute warning. and was like, hey, finna be over with. You know what I'm saying? So we just still talking and enjoying our time. The whole time I'm talking to old girl, I occasionally look over at Uncle Frank, make sure ain't nothing crazy going on. And she asked me that. She was like, why you keep looking back? You must know them folks or something. So I told her, like, no, the old man, he in the dorm with me. I'm cool with him. I just be aware of my surroundings and stuff like that. So, and we get up, we get up to, uh, you know, do our last little hug or whatever. I hugged the girl. I hugged her real tight. Get me a kiss in. Squeeze that thing again. So... You know, she like, all right, I'm going to be back next weekend, baby. I'm like, all right, baby, whatever. So she go to walking this way. So Uncle Frank, man, was still sitting down. He just stood up. So Uncle Frank go, get his hug, he get his kiss, and he holding the girl. And then I heard Uncle Frank say his voice got a little loud. It ain't get too loud when he was screaming or nothing. But from where I was standing, it got a little loud. He said, baby, I just love you so much. Baby, I love you. Damn, I love you so much, baby. Damn, I love you. And his voice started cracking up where he started crying, bro. And the girl was saying, I love you so much too, Frank. And before she could get the Frank out, he had her. Man, this thing, you know, he just like swung. Boom! Slammed her real hard, bro. When he slammed her on the ground, she went to screaming. The officer from that, uh, that was sitting at that desk, he jumped over the desk, took off running towards us. While he was in the process of jumping over the desk, Uncle Frank went to kneeling down and just started punching the lady all in the face, bro. Boom, 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 boom. Then he just went to scream. He was saying the stuff he told me. He like, you been my nephew. You got my mother, nephew living in my mother. Oh, and that ain't my baby. Kyra ain't my baby. Kyra ain't my mother. Baby, so you mean to tell me Kyra is my mother nephew, baby? Guess Kyra was the name of the little girl that he thought was his daughter. You know, like I said, I felt bad, but I really felt like, you know, I, I understand in prison that you can get caught up in some real dangerous type situations about getting in people's business. And that's why I did not want to involve myself in no type of way. But, you know, because I'm cool with Uncle Frank, that's what makes it a little different. Once he went to papping her out, and she she couldn't even get up, bro. You know, I ran and kind of like tried to scoop Uncle Frank like this, but I think he was just so focused and so psyched out when I did that, bro. He turned to me, he turned towards me and let off two of them, but I weaved both of them. And by the time I weaved both of them. I turn this way, I like get back, push him back. When I turn this way, that's when I see one of the other dudes who was having visitation running this way. Tell my man, what the? Like with both of his fists balled up. The officer is right next to him, so it's down there like they running side to side, like they both trying to get over here. As he's getting closer, he do his arm like this, like Uncle Frank laying down, so I know he finna try to like, like uppercut. Uncle Frank or something. When I pushed the table, I was standing there. I pushed it all the way to the side and stepped to him. I didn't say nothing, but my demeanor told him everything. He like, man, what's up, man? What's up? See, man, you just gonna sit there and let the man? Now, you know, I don't condone, like I say, stuff like that, but at the same time, it's like this. I'm looking at it like, you know, I, this really ain't got nothing to do with me. This is not my business. I'm in prison just like Uncle Frank. 
So I'm not really too tough getting involved in people's stuff. But if you think you about to come over here and sneak him and try to swing on him while he ain't paying attention to something, no, I'm not going for that. We not doing that. So when I explain that in a much shorter version, the officer instantly done tackled Uncle Frank. He done tackled Uncle Frank. He done went to screaming on the radio for backup. Him and Uncle Frank did the real life fighting. Like when he tackled Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank go back onto another table that was sitting like where all the games and stuff at for the kids. But when Uncle Frank go back on it and the officer like right here, he go to leaning his head up trying to wrestle Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank just go to like hitting him with them little short uppercuts all in the face. Boom, 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 boom. Hitting the officer, Uncle Frank crying, bro. He got tears coming down his eye. It was so damn sad, bro. Damn, I felt so bad. So the girl just now finally getting up. You know, she bleeding and stuff, all kind of stuff like that. So when she getting up, once she almost up, the dude that tried to run up on Uncle Frank, like he was about to do something, he go like grab her a little bit trying to help her up some more. In the process of him doing that, she snatched back from him. He said, you inmate, don't mother touch me. Get your hands off me. At that time, backup was coming in. When they came in and they witnessed him like kind of pulling her up and she snatched back and went to cussing him out. Bro, you probably had like 10 officers ran in there, bro. Now when they came in there, you know they all went to scream, get on ground, get on ground, all that type of stuff. So I got straight on the floor when I seen all them. But I say half of them ran towards Uncle Frank and the other half of them ran towards dude. They just ran towards them, slammed them out. Man, we had a, a sergeant named Sergeant Smiley, bro, he had his flashlight. He went hitting dude all in the head with the flashlight. Everything, hitting the man all in the back. They done got him all down on the ground. They done handcuffed him, bro. You got officers kicking him. Now, you know, you got a few other officers the whole time all this going on. They making everybody leave, like all the visitors. They pushing everybody out. They making everybody leave. The few inmates that was visiting them, they pushing them back, making them leave and go back to the dorm. And my thing is this, bro. You don't know what a person's situation is, bro. I understand that, you know, you got good Samaritan. Some people want to be good Samaritan. Some people want to help, you know, situations out. Bro, I think it's best to not get involved in nobody's situation, bro. Number one, we are in prison. This is a very dangerous environment. You understand that just like I understand that. You ain't got no business jumping in nobody's situation not knowing what's going on. That can get your life taken away, bro. I understand you saying, man, he just hit a female. Okay, so what if you would have hit him and then you would have went back to the dorm and he went to the hole and then this man got, a, got some money for real and then what if this man tells somebody else, hey, I'm going to give you $2,000 Go whack buddy that swung on me in visitation. And then somebody come take your life. Then what? You just got to stay out of stuff like that, bro. Luckily, I was cool with Uncle Frank prior to this happening. Because when I sit back and think about it, my life could have been on the line. I'm telling you, Uncle Frank had paperwork, bro. He had stuff. He had a lot of stuff going on. What if Uncle Frank would have been so psyched out after this situation and been like, yeah, C-Bill jumped in, tried to grab me. I tried to swing on him, but I missed him. Hey, man, I'm going to pay y'all. Go post CBL out. I could have been in the situation. They done finally got Uncle Frank in handcuffed. They done even came over there and damn handcuffed me. All the other inmates that didn't get straight on the floor, the ones that just hurry up and left out, you know, they was good. But I think it was, it was like another one in there. Everybody that was in there got handcuffed, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So once they got everybody up and then the officer that was working there, he went to explain what happened, what happened, this, this, and that. And then he gonna tell the officers that dude that they just beat the brakes off of was really trying to help the lady. Then he gonna say, I was trying to help Uncle Frank. Talking about I was trying to help Uncle Frank because when dude ran up, it's like I like tried to square with him, so they took us both to the hole. We was on two different sides of the hole. I wasn't able to talk to him for real. They came, they, they sent me a paperwork. They sent me some paperwork from the jail of that county and was telling me that I had court. Um, I think it said I had a first appearance of some aggravated assault, child endangerment, all kind of stuff. It was trying to tell me that I had, uh, I think the very next morning. Now we was in a hole for about two weeks before I got this. The very next morning after I got it is when they came and got me, told me, come on handcuff, I gotta go to court. 
you know, I was stressed out, bro. I ain't gonna lie, because I was just like, damn, I didn't even do nothing for real. It's all because I told dude, like, hell no, you ain't about to swing on Uncle Frank. You don't even know what he got going on. Like, then he ain't even paying attention. You know what I'm saying? If he was looking up at you, then I couldn't say nothing, but he's looking down. You just go trying to swing on Uncle Frank, hell no. So when we get to the court, bro, you know, the little court appointed attorney come talk to me. Now, I was on the van with Uncle Frank. We talking about it. He told me straight up. He was like, man, I'm not about to let you get in trouble by nothing. I'm about to tell them, you know. So Uncle Frank told me straight up. He was like, man, this is what you do, bro. You know, I'm about to go in here and tell them straight up what's going on. He said, but when it comes to your side, I'm going to tell them that you was trying to stop me, that you snatched me up. And I just was snatching back from you. But when the officers came in, it looked like something else. He said, bro, you could tell them the same thing. You might not even have to. He said, but that's what it is, bro. I ain't about to let you get in trouble about something I did. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was just talking to him about it. He seemed like that was therapeutic for him, I guess. I don't know. But he seemed like he wasn't all down and sad no more. And uh, we went in there, and the uh, public defender, you know, was talking to me. So I told the public defender, I'm like, nah, I ain't had nothing to do with nothing, bro. I just tried to stop a situation from happening. I tried to stop some people from fighting. And hey, bro, I don't know how I got caught up into it. They was like, all right. So they asking me about how am I going to plead. I'm like, not guilty. The hell you mean? How am I going to plead? Whatever. So they're like, all right. So she leave me in that little tank. And I guess she go talk to some old people, whatever. So now you got people. Going back, bro, I've been sitting in this jail for hours. So now you got people going back to the dorm. I'm still sitting here. The officer come in there. I'm sitting in this room with a whole bunch of people. The officer coming there with people's names, with a list, calling people by their last name. And then they'd get up and leave. Get up and leave like two people at a time. Bro, I'm still the last one sitting in this thing, bro. Then they start calling people out the other rooms. So they call them people, two people at a time. So the last two people, Uncle Frank, one of them. So he go to walking by, you know, he shackled up his, his wrist shackled around his waist and his ankle shackled. And when he walked past, he looked up at me and he did like this. He was like, so I know he was telling me, bro, you good. I just went in there and told them what I did and that you was just trying to stop me from doing what I did. And lo and behold, bro, I probably say about another 10 minutes went by and then they finally came and called my name. And I told the officer, I said, what, I'm about to go up there to the court? He said, no, you're going back to the prison you came from. I said, I ain't got to go to court. He said, I don't know what they did, but they just told me to send you back to the prison. So I'm like, all right. So I went back to the prison, bro. They raised Uncle Frank's security to close and they transferred him off. I think he went, ended up going to Hayes State Prison. And I was still there for a few months before my security got raised and I got transferred off. But it's like this, bro. There's a lot of people in prison right now. And I have seen so, so, so many different people. So many different cases that's in prison right now. Got something to do with a woman. So many people done caught murder charges, bro. Because of, you know, the girl did this or the girl did that. Or she got caught cheating on her. And you know, bro. It just make me want to tell people, especially the younger people, bro, that probably ain't had no real guidance, that ain't had no uh, real father figure or even a real mother type figure to really sit them down and teach them about stuff like relationships. It just make me want to tell people, bro, folks, don't never let nobody get you out your character, bro. Never. Don't never let nobody get you out your character to the point stuff can become detrimental for you. Like, if, if, bro, especially when it comes to women, especially nowadays with the way the world is and, you know, the way the, 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 the cheating thing is just so big and bold and just out there in your face, how it's like men and women is damn near praising. Like, you listen to all the music, men or women, it's like they're damn near praising and uplifting, cheating, playing somebody, hurting their feelings, then skating. That exact thing that people is praising and raising up in these songs is the reason a lot of people are in prison right now because they went through that feeling and they went and killed that ass but the thing is bro you got to learn emotion management and you just got to understand people bro you know what i'm saying so you got to understand that a human being can do anything bro i can be in love with you 
And it's a possibility, you know, I can be in love with you, I could be paying the bills, I can make sure everything Gucci, and there is a possibility while I'm out grinding one day, Jody could be in here clapping cheeks. It's up to me how I would respond to it if I walked in and caught Jody in here clapping cheeks. And it's on, it's on a situation like, is it really worth it, folks? If you real life think about it, if you go bananas and black out, and hurt her and Jody, bro, you going to prison. I promise you it's not worth it. You're going to be in prison one day, hungry as hell, police handling you any kind of way, making you strip search, get butt naked in front of 50, 60 other dudes in the room, and you're going to be wishing like, damn, I wish I'd have just told her and Jody to get the hell out of my house. You know what I'm saying, bro? If you go through a situation dealing with a partner, male or female, and they just got you to that point where you're just so mad or you really feel like doing something to them, always remember this. If a person gets you to the point where you feel like you have to cause physical harm to them, at that moment, it is in your best interest to leave. Cut they ass off. Cut all forms of communication. I'm talking about ain't no texting, ain't no, hey, let's work, ain't no working nothing out. If any female on earth that I deal with gets me to the point where I even have a thought in my mind like, I'm about to go slap fuck on her ass. It's over with. I'm not talking to you no more. I'm not kicking it. I'm changing my number. Do not make that mistake and mess things up for your life because of a decision somebody else made or because somebody else hurt your feelings. Hey, it's life. You're going to go through it. You're going to get your feelings hurt. You may possibly hurt somebody else's feelings. You're going to get lied to. You may just get cheated on. Everybody don't cheat, but I'm just saying it is a possibility. But don't deal with it with violence, bro. That's all I'm saying. No matter what a person do to you, because when you go to prison, it's not worth it. I promise it's not worth it. Uh, Uncle Frank, of course, didn't care because he had already had a life sentence. So they gave him an aggravated assault on every outside, every civilian. So, so each one of those kids... They charged him with child endangerment. Each one of those people that was there visiting other people, they charged him with aggravated assault, even though he never hit them physically, just because they was in the room when he did this, they charged him with that. But it's like, I already got a life sentence. What did that do for me? You know what I'm saying? So, it's your boy Bill, I'm gone. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the fees? What the fees? What the fees?